this week in Disney for October 25th to October 31st, which oh, is my Halloween. <laughs> so we put on, these are last year's Halloween they shirts are. that we got. Yeah, and we a little Disney them. history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> One year ago. Yeah. One year ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I really love these shirts and yeah. I didn't notice. They were still like, yeah, this year nothing this grabbed year. me. Yeah, that's okay. But I mean that's just more I think on us and the fact that so much merch is centered on the fifty. Right. And not how right. For sure. But so maybe next year we'll get some new shirts. But these are cute and they we sure. enjoy I like these them. like Yes. Yeah. Oh, and I do have that awesome jacket that I got. The um, no, why am I forgetting her mm. name from the Haunted oh. Mansion? <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's Madame like Leota. Madame Leota that jacket. That was the jacket of the year last year. Yeah, and I wore it when it wasn't Halloween because yeah. it's just so cool. <laughs> you should sport it on the beach this week. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds fun. But let's get into it. We are going to be talking about a lot of Halloween things to look forward to this week. And I hope you guys are having fun for Halloween. I would actually was hoping in the comments you guys could share with us what you're doing for Halloween, whether it's Disney related or not. We'd like to hear about your costumes, what you're doing, how you decorate, all that. Because, you know, you guys that comment a lot, it's just fun to hear from you and I'd love to hear about what you're doing for Halloween. So I just thought I'd add that in there. But to get started, this the big feature this week, we're going to 1954 on October 27th, uh, um, Walt Disney's very first television series, Walt Disney's Disneyland, named after his yet to be completed park, uh, premiered on this day. So October 27th. Very so. good television, historic television, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. important television. Yes, this premiered on ABC, of course, at the time. And it was cool, about 30.8 million people were viewing it when it premiered. So I think for 54, that's pretty impressive yeah, yeah, yeah. for a new TV show. Um, apparently, I didn't realize this till today, but Walt Disney was um, one of the first filmmakers to premiere a television show. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I mean, I have heard stories from my loved ones and grandparents yeah. of how they would gather around the television for the Disneyland show and for yeah. World of Disney. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that wasn't even a worldwide broadcast. You know, worldwide broadcast didn't happen till later. So I mean, yeah. those numbers are impressive in most Honestly, North America. Don't you feel? I feel like I would have really loved to have been alive at this time. Yeah. And enjoy it. I mean, my well, the TVs weren't too good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give my mom's when she was born her age or anything, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. let's just say that. It's good stuff. Uh, yeah, well, all our parents, it was around their very early, early, early childhood. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the Disneyland show actually was named uh, quite a few different names over really? the years. Yeah, well, of course. Oh, like, World like of I was Color, saying, okay, yes. 40 years mm -hmm. of um, Okay, TV. so as if it's continuous, mm -hmm. yes. The Disney and World, so um, it went on for six, it had six different titles. Um, for over 40 years, multiple Beautiful. seasons. Um, but this was to promote Disneyland, and it was actually to get some money <laughs> for Disneyland as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's really interesting because if you think about like Disney Plus right now and how well it's doing, and you know, hopefully that'll translate into the parks across the world. I think it will. I, I, think, think, yeah. I think everybody yeah. believes. You know, I don't know if it's true, but I think everyone yeah. believes that Che Peck is very IP focused and that he wants IP in the parks. And I think that Epcot um, Harmonious shows that the, the yeah. IP is in the park, even though it's a lovely mm -hmm. total Epcot true experience that turns it into carnival even after the last fireworks go off. It's mm -hmm. an IP heavy experience, and I think sure. IP is coming to the parks. Sure. Yeah. But at the but I'm what I'm saying too is that just that that money from Disney Plus can really oh, yes. help I'm, to yes. fund maybe mm -hmm. another park at Disney World mm -hmm. or maybe a, I think that announcement I think everyone yeah. thinks it's coming. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm all for like a Midwest park, even though we moved, oh. we always wanted a Midwest park, and I still care about those Midwesterners, and they need... <laughs> I don't know how you do it with snow, except but, like, that they do it in Paris. Mid Midwest, like, it could be Missouri, okay. that area, because there's that awesome park. I'd love to go there. Yeah. I'm sure they don't Maybe want just to Maybe just Disney buys up like Branson. <laughs> That's what I'm talking it. about. Yeah. That's the part. Okay, so the show, um, the first episode, um, were get, they were given a quick view of the studio, and then um, they went right. Walt went right to talking about the Disneyland park and and promoting the park and sharing about that. Of course, that everyone got their first idea of what um, this All theme park would models. be like. Yeah. Um, this episode was directed by Robert Flory, and it's. Um, like I said, the, the park, they, the people got exposure to the park they were building in Anaheim. The episode also featured the song, The Ballad of Davy Crockett, sung by Fess Parker. There you go. And today, so, still sung by our country bears. Or mm -hmm. at least the wall mount. Yeah, no, that's, no. So as the coming attraction for the upcoming Crockett trilogy, as well as, um, what was going to appear in the park, um, promoting yes. Davy Crockett. So the Disneyland series um, was pretty huge. Yeah. It was huge for everyone. Well, I mean, I mean, you just think about the reception mm -hmm. of the opening day and mm -hmm. how, I mean, mobs literally <laughs> like broke down the walls. It was effective. It was really, really effective. Yeah. And if you think of over the years, like huge names that were on the show, um, it it yeah, ended up being like Art Linkletter, yes. Bob Cummings, and Ronald Reagan. There you go. Um, there were some really cool things that happened throughout the years oh, yeah. with the show, for for sure. And then the wonderful. I just world want to say about color. Art Linkletter. It's kind sure. of like funny, but I had an illustrated children's encyclopedia yeah. that had Art Linkletter's like endorsement on it. So I enjoyed Art Linkletter when, even mm. when I was a kid in the eighties. Yeah. Because of that book, I learned a lot from that encyclopedia. I mean, it was a series, it was a volume. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, of course, you and I really know well is The Wonderful World of Disney. That's what it's yes. called. And it's been called that twice. Mm. So, um, technically, there's only five names because it was called The Wonderful yeah. World of Disney twice. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we knew. So many good things. Really, really well. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it is called today. Yeah. I was a paper boy, so I would roll up the. Um, TV guide into the newspaper every weekend and many times Disney was featured on the front of it so yeah. I remember it that way too I was very excited about that show. What I love about um, the Disneyland TV show and, or the Wonderful World of Color or, or whatever what, at the time it was called they always did these things where they would take all the cartoons and put them into theming or like for Halloween they did a whole Halloween episode or whatever, where they'd have a lot of the Halloween cartoons um, played on the show. Very and nice. um, it's a good way to, that they could repackage mm -hmm. their shorts into, um, you know, a bigger episode. Um, so you could sit there and watch them. That's why I love more of, I would love this on Disney Plus, for yeah. sure. I mean, they are kind of doing the groupings, mm -hmm. you know. So. But like, if you go to watch cartoons. You're saying you want them kind of curated into shorts. Yeah, like so like, if you yeah. put on a short, then it plays the short for like five minutes or whatever, let's just right. say. And then it stops. And so you got to start another short. And so I, you're saying Disney Plus playlists. A playlist of the shorts. So there you go. Or just, even if you could make them. That'd be fun. In the in the app, like you can. Yeah. We should stop talking. We should get no, do it. Do, no, 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 no. Just do it. We're just kidding. It'd be awesome though, for sure. Um, but yeah, so that happened on October 27th. That's so awesome. on October 27th, you guys try to celebrate the Disneyland show and share your memories if yeah. you were around for it. Oh, let me let me share what he said though yeah. about the park. Walt said, "We hope it will be unlike anything else on this earth, a fair, an amusement park, an exhibition, a city from Arabian Nights, a metropolis of fu of the future, a place of hope, a metropolis of the future, <laughs> a place of hopes and dreams, facts and fancy, all in one." Wow, that's amazing! Like as you said, each one, all I hear is "bing bing," and like a check mark <laughs> yep. for each and every one. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Well, I'll tell you yeah. before you move on to like the other ones. I just mm -hmm. want to say you had the invitation to. Uh, for people to share what they're doing for Halloween and for the harvest yes, season. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that I talked about Miles. He entered a chili cook-off and he <laughs> entered it 
with a wonderful chili recipe that you are welcome to try yourself. It was a, hot, a ballpark hot dog chili. Like yeah. <laughs> with, like so hot dogs right in the chili and cut like just into thirds. Right. But with a hot dog bun croutons. croutons. <laughs> so it was, was very so successful. Cool. I was very yeah. like, pleased with it. So he did a great job. Definitely people who had it enjoyed it. It was so delicious. Sure. <laughs> and he did it. I made him do, I just stood there and was like, okay, oh, chop he did. that, do that. I made him chop the onions. We didn't even adjust the seasoning or anything. It was exceptional. Yeah, it was really cool. Exceptional. Yeah, he did a great job. All right, so moving on to this week and all that we can enjoy. Um, October uh, 25th, so still in keeping with the 50th celebrations, we have to. So in 1971, on this day, the formal dedication of Walt Disney World actually took place in Florida. <laughs> so there's always like the opening and then there's the formal dedication. Yeah. So you never know, like. Something could happen this week yeah. around it. Yeah, head over if you can to yeah. Magic Kingdom yeah. on the 25th. For real. All of a sudden, Do it. <laughs> the reservation goes out the door. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> the park um, had been open, of course, since October first. Standing alongside Roy O. Disney during the dedication in Town Square's Mickey Mouse, portrayed by. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't want to say that. <gasps> oh, sorry. He has a friend. Mickey Mouse has a, had a friend at this time, and his name was Doug Parks. Let's say that. All right, so the grand opening parade went down Main Street featuring 1,076 piece band and led by music man Meredith Wilson. I just think that's amazing. 76 trombones. Ah, that's so cool, isn't that? It's a, like that song, Fantasia right? come to life. Yeah, it's fantastic. So uh, that kicked off at 2 p.m. and then a 90 minute TV special, of course, will air four days later. Um, among the musicians were um, down Main Street is Michael Hamlin, a high school trumpeter from Venice, Florida. And he said, it was a long day of practicing the music and marching. I remember it being hot that day when it was all over and most of the band participants had left. We were still waiting for a bus. Then Roy Disney came by to thank us and to shake our hand. He was a very nice man for taking the time out to do that. I will remember this forever. We were all awarded a certificate and 10 ticket books. Oh. Whoa! <laughs> I still so have, awesome. he said he, he saved one, I still have one. I also received a thank you letter from Meredith Wilson. That's so. amazing. For some reason I just yeah. saw like Roy's mustache the whole yeah. time. Like just, I don't know, just his personality held up and then just, wow, 10 mm -hmm. books, that's so fun. <laughs> yeah, so that's like a little piece into that day and, and one of the musicians. Um, the official dedication uh, was taking place like from 1.30 to 3.30 and um, the TV special was being filmed as well. So there was a lot of like announcements being made like, you know, certain things weren't gonna be running um, normally so if you were there at the park that day it was gonna be kind of a different day um, Just really fun that <laughs> really cool all took place right right where we enjoy yeah. Magic Kingdom today I know <laughs> I know, isn't that just fantastic? Amazing. It's so cool, it's so cool. So that's the big celebration, October 25th. And then in 1997, going all the way into the future and starting off some Halloween talk, Whoa. the Disney Channel original movie Under Wraps uh, aired. And this is about a 12 year old kid who discovers a mummy in the basement, yeah. of this old man's basement. And I just thought this was interesting because I saw the date on it and I was like, I think yeah. it was from the 2000s. I know. And I think that's because we were exposed to it later. I'll tell you mm -hmm. what really happened. 1997. Yeah. Um, they started releasing movies in letterbox form. So you were able to get them in at home with the widescreen. <laughs> Yeah. And so we started watching a lot of movies in 1997. Who knows information That's like what we that? Did. You do. That's what we <laughs> did. No, I did like the Columbia House he video, would... and it was only Letterbox. So <laughs> when we were young and married with little kids, he'd be like, "Why is the TV set like this? Why this is Letterbox or whatever? You need to set right, it." Right, no zoom in. And I'd right. be like, "What's like?" I didn't even notice, but oh. I'm glad I have you too. Of course. 
Well, it's the full Side theatrical street. vision, <laughs> so of course. Yeah, it's and cool. it was, and it was not until then what, that we had it. So. Yeah, yeah. They decided Details. to start releasing it to us. Details for sure. Yeah. And then in 2000, um, this is so cool. 30, just 30. Uh, lucky haunted mansion fans dine in the popular Disneyland attraction as part of a $2,000 a plate. Uh, fantasy dinner offered by the park. Wow. So this is I, in yeah. Haunted Mansion? Yeah, in the oh. Haunted Mansion. I think I vaguely remember hearing about it, but that's amazing. It's what amazing. It really is. I can understand why they don't do this. Yeah. Like it's, a little it's not good like it's not good for the attraction and it could affect like its Perhaps. health and wellness maybe. But <laughs> I also think that it that for these people it was a once in a lifetime experience. Yeah. And on reopening day yeah. it shut down on us and we got to walk out through it, through the graveyard. It was pretty cool. Oh, like yeah. all the way through the graveyard, past the hitchhiking ghosts. Yeah. Last year, when yeah, the park, awesome. when first, magic, day first day that the park reopened, yeah. yeah, we got to walk out, and so we got to it see it. Cool. It was really, really cool. Um, yeah, that was fun, and we were live on Instagram. That was so fun. It was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then in 2011, I we did uh, this day in Disney on this, and I just want to remind everyone about um, Brian Wilson had yeah. released that CD yeah. in key in the key of Disney. Yes, um, where he takes tunes from. Um, like the Little Mermaid, Toy Story, Dumbo, it's The Lion an, King, yeah. and um, yeah. Pinocchio as yeah. well. It's an awesome album. Mm -hmm. And like the Beach Boys obviously have the Grand Floridian connection. But Brian Wilson, just to speak of him. I mean, oh, no. and no, and the Beach Boys. <laughs> yeah. You know, his work on Pet Sounds, like he did that a lot independently while they were on tour. His career just in general, like... His studio work, everything. He is a very, very noble musician and just a fantastic contributor to yeah. rock and roll, folk, and Americana. And that yeah. he came to do Disney is such a sweet tribute as yeah. well. Yeah, go check out the CD. Yeah. You will be surprised, but you feel the sound of the Beach Boys in it, but not yeah. in it in the way you'd expect. It's yeah. really neat. It's so Brian Wilson. Check it out. Check it. Yeah. So October 26, 1945, uh, Disney's Cured Duck is released. <laughs> so this is Donald and Daisy cartoon, mm -hmm. and um, Donald basically can't go on it, the date with uh, Daisy unless he cures his temper. And he actually um, goes and orders a temp this machine. <laughs> He can't leave the house until he cures his temper, basically. So, yeah. that's funny. You know, we all have It works, though. He gets pretty suave. <laughs> he goes from, like, angry duck to, like, suave duck pretty fast. And he does pretty well. Mail oh order. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty funny. The machine yeah. actually abuses him until he... It's, it's a strange <laughs> way to cure a temper because it yeah. keeps... Um, no, it's a very you go just go watch yeah. it. It's interesting. Yeah. It's certainly interesting. Yeah, and um, surprise there's ending. a little surprise. Yeah, at the <laughs> ending. So you're gonna have to watch it because of that surprise ending for sure. And then moving on to October 29th, 1971. And this is the show that they filmed on the dedication day. So in 1971, the 90-minute NBC TV special, the grand opening of Walt Disney World, showed, and 52. Okay million people watched that night so that's kind of interesting of since that's 71 so you know we had talked about 30 million uh and in like just a short time later that's a lot of tvs being sold <laughs> yeah. sure thing um so <laughs> plus they have the uh, color and black being i don't know maybe it wasn't so color everybody, yet. i don't want to say that yet. it's the same kind of thing as the disneyland show because everybody yeah. got to see what Disney World was like on TV. So mm -hmm. even if you couldn't get there, you got to see it. Indeed. So it's really, really cool. And um, it was filmed during the three day grand opening. So um, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And appearances include Julie Andrews, of course, Glenn Campbell, Buddy Hackett, Jonathan Winters, and Bob Hope. Do you remember, <laughs> like, just in my head right now, like when we were in the 80s and 90s, I could hear someone announcing their names, that, that announcer, you know, uh -huh. like who used to announce, uh -huh. Uh -huh. like who's going to be on the show tonight. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> anyway, so those those particular and many of those names group. were still yeah being set in the 80s. yeah for sure for sure. And so, still upset today. Go check this out. You can find it on YouTube. And then 1993. Oh my goodness, you. You watch this every Halloween. I'm sure you already watched it, but 1993 Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas is yeah. released on October 29th. Yeah. I loved this film. I have to say, I don't know if I've said it on the show before, but yeah. like the reason it's such a big one to me is because I had always gone to films with my family, mm -hmm. but this was like the first one that like I paid for and went yeah. to twice. It yeah. was just amazing. I encourage people to. This was like one of the first films. I really evangelized for it was just like you need to go see this film and convinced a lot of people to go yeah. see it yeah. i was a bit of a rebel back then oh yes of course i brought um chinese food in to the oh, theater secretly yummy, yummy. chinese food but i remember it distinctly i love this film and i love that i was eating chinese food at the same time of course <laughs> so, there trouble you go. trouble yep there you go all right and then also in um Actually, on October 30th, 1929, Disney's fourth Silly Symphony cartoon, Hell's Bells, is released. <laughs> this is, yeah, you gotta watch it. It's a Halloween thing. It's mm -hmm. definitely focused on hell. And yeah, the devil's in it. Um, but let's talk about the music. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. gonna say. It's very interesting because they use March of the Marionette. Yeah, I think. The funeral Marionette. The funeral. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which and makes sense for the. Yeah, yeah, you the, know this for the music, animation. Though. Yeah, and it, it went on to be the theme of right. Alfred Hitchcock Presents in like yeah. 1955. Right. And this so is this is 1929. Yeah. 29. But the song so, itself is from 1897. Yeah, it's, from, it's a so, classical. Yeah. You'll if you just go watch it, you'll hear the music. But it's really really interesting because when you go to the Wikipedia. Dun, 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 yeah, that's dun, it. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, yeah, Alfred Hitchcock, yeah. he must have liked this cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it's a really old classical yeah. song, so it's very, it was very familiar, I'm sure. So check it out. That's a good Halloween fun thing to do. And then October 31st, Halloween day, um, first off. Uh, in 1939, this is the date of the fateful elevator accident. <gasps> yes. Not at our beloved. That's right, at the Tower of Terror. <laughs> so, <laughs> from Alfred this. Hitchcock yeah. to Twilight Zone. Exactly. That's how we move. So, Disney's scary attraction, this was inscribed, the eviction notice is. Eviction notice that, that appears on the entrance gates and on a notice in one of the elevators. Okay. Yeah. So, you know I love this, right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite. Number one. Yeah, for yeah, sure. So, one. so, yeah, I love this. The 19, I'll tell you a funny I, thing. If, if you say 1939, you, can you think of anything else but no. <laughs> this no. elevator incident? <laughs> of course <Yeah>. not. <laughs> I was going to say something about. Yeah. Haunted Mansion, not about Tower So oh. I have nothing funny to say. Oh. There's nothing funny. About it. Actually, when I hear 1939, then the whole quote goes through my head, and then the 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 song "Sing, Sing, Sing," you know that they play at the top. Um, you okay. hear it a lot. They play it at Hollywood Studios. Right. Right? It's like I can't do it. Oh come on! I can't. Right. You're good at that. But anyway, um, go look up "Sing, Sing, Sing" because okay. that's. That's what plays in my head. And it's also in the Tower of Terror movie. Are you guys going to watch that for Halloween? Have Steve you seen it? Steve <laughs> Gutenberg. Like totally it. like 80s. Yeah. Like for real. Like Three Men and a Baby, Police Academy, that's Steve Gutenberg. We've literally heard about this film because a bus driver, a Disney bus driver, was super dissing it. Mm -hmm. And so I had to go find out for myself what I thought so of it. we bought it up. We bought it's it. It's behind us. I won't dig it up. I love it. No. I actually love this film. It's fun. It's great. What? It's, it's great. Fun. I didn't say it was fun. I said okay. it was fun. <laughs> All right, awesome. And that's one of a couple of films that the ride was made first and then the film. So that's a good trivia if you guys know. There's, there's a, I think the others are at Magic Kingdom. So yeah. if you don't already know that, I'm sure you guys know. You could talk about it in the comments. Yeah, Country Bears, what? Tomorrowland. So you're not supposed to. <clears throat> Anyway, <laughs> in 1989, this is so fun too, and it kind of goes in setting because there's a ballroom theme in Tower of Terror. 
um, they were actually going up to get to the ballroom. And then in, anyway, so then in 1989 at the Contemporary Resort, oh, yeah. you could actually go, there was a Halloween party that took place at the ballroom in the Americas. Um, yeah, like on the second floor. In the yeah, at right 7 p.m. So that's so cool on Halloween that you could do that in 89. Yeah, that sounds really fun. It sounds really, really fun. Yeah, especially if you were like staying. That was before Bay Lake Tower though. Yeah. I mean, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then lastly, 2017. I just, I thought this was so interesting. Like, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is held for the 31st time. I love that. At the Magic Kingdom. I love that. So, you know, we talked about the Halloween hysteria party that was you know, one, uh, it wasn't even on, ha that was the right. first one, it was one night, it wasn't even on Halloween. And then toward like the late 80s and 90s, they got up to like three or whatever. Three. And you know, through the 2000s, it's progressed up to 31. 31, I, I nice, so fun. I didn't check how many it's a lot of candy. Um, Halloween parties there were this year. Yeah, um, I think more than that, because they started yeah. it like in July. They started did no, they I'm start just, in July? I'm, no, I'm no they started August. It was, yeah, it was pretty quick though. <laughs> but it is weird living here now. It's like, oh, it's Halloween now. It's August. <laughs> mm -hmm. When before it was like, for yeah. me, I would think not till the end of September, really. Yeah, yeah, I really liked the way we did it last year, staying at the Poly. I think if we had done that this year on opening day, it might have been nice. I think maybe we'll make that like a biennial tradition or something. Oh, okay. it was fun. Sounds fun. Yeah. They'll be done with all done with it over there. But yeah. anyway, have you guys been to the party? We we did. We've done it twice, I think. Yes. Oh, the nighttime. Yeah. yeah. Two or three times. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. We... It's fun. The, the first couple times we didn't know about the candy. And that mm -hmm. kind of like disappointed me. Well, like... we were on the vacation. We didn't know. Right. We didn't even bring costumes. So the kids just kind of we threw stuff together and kind of bought stuff and had stuff on hand. <gasps> Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't want to disagree. Was it maybe with the cruise, the same trip as the cruise? Because no. I feel like I had my pirate. Okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You wore that. That was another okay. year. There yeah. You go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we, we love it. You know, it's just it's really fun. Yeah. It and really I fun. like to do the um, shooting gallery during that, the little in Frontierland. I usually don't do that when I do the Halloween ticket event. I just enjoy doing and it. And also then. the character meet and greets that you know. Oh get yes, to do. like Tarzan's there. Well yeah. That I line is so long, I've never done it. Jack and Sally. Jack and Sally. Yeah. I gotta say I I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the character Jack. I don't like his head. I'd like him to have a different head. That's just the truth. Off with the head. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the human Seriously. like human jaw mm -hmm. on it. It's not Jack. It's not the the animation. Right, just put the head the stop stop yeah, motion. Yeah. For sure. And they used, wow, they used a lot of soft motion. I mean, I know that's disrespectful to the person portraying it. Like, <laughs> the person portraying it loves having his mouth exposed. Yeah. But, come on. I just, I just want He probably head. needs to so he can talk to people. You know? right? Get a mic. As long as there's like some breezes in there and it's, and he gets his breaks, I think okay. it's, I mean, if he's down with it, or she is down with it, because I don't know who's portraying it. But that's all. I just love to have that full head. It's Jack Skellington yeah. who <sighs> is there, so I don't really know what you were just talking about. It's wow. a very strange conversation. Brutal. <laughs> but anyway, Halloween, oh my goodness, it's such a fun time of year. I loved it last year because a lot of the parades and stuff from the party, the, the elements that were in the party they just had in the park, and um, and now you have to you know do the ticketed event to kind of experience that, which is fine, and I understand it's a bit pricey though for some people, yeah. and so mm -hmm. you know you don't get to enjoy it. And I would like them to put out, please put out all the Halloween stuff next year, and I'm hoping Christmas is full blown, because oh. there was stuff. There's still, you know. The Halloween decorations missing from the Magic Kingdom that I'd love to um, see come back. So yeah. hopefully next year and uh, we'll see what happens with Christmas. I don't know. But that's it for this week in Disney. I hope you guys have lots of fun this week with your Halloween celebrations. Happy Halloween. And yeah, have a happy Halloween and we'll see you